Her Excellency Ms. Alcinda Antonio de Abro, Minister for Coordination of Environmental Affairs of Mozambique. Your Excellency, you have the floor. Thank you very much. Madam President, Your Excellencies, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Delegates, Ladies and Gentlemen, on behalf of the people and government of the Republic of Mozambique, and on my own behalf, I wish to congratulate the people and government of Denmark for hosting this important and historic UN conference. We believe these are crucial negotiations aimed at achieving effective enhancement of the implementation of the convention. I come from a country, Mozambique, that has been praised by its efforts to maintain peace, develop democracy, a country with an annual economic growth between 7 to 8 percent. However, my country is one of the most vulnerable to the adverse effects of climate change, which will frustrate the efforts to tackle poverty and promote social and economic sustainable development. Conscious of these and other adverse factors in our development process, the government of Mozambique has been integrating climate change related issues in development policies, programs, strategies, and plans of action. The government has also adopted strategies for managing water resources, biofuels, reforestation, and development of new and renewable energies, planning policies, and conservation. In fact, the government has defined climate and environmental issues as cross-cutting matters that have to be taken into account in all spheres of development in both public and private sectors. Ladies and gentlemen, we acknowledge the relevance of education, awareness, and dissemination of information and best environmental practice. In this context, our President Armando Emilio Gebuza has launched in April this year the Environmental Education Program aimed at creating a common national vision for an environmental management leading to a sustainable development that contributes to the reduction of environmental degradation factors, particularly those whose root causes are man-made. Additionally, we are engaged in promoting capacity building measures in order to deal with the challenge of climate change. Therefore, we need urgently to access financial and technological resources that will enable us to implement the adopted policy strategies and programs to enhance the resilience of the vulnerable communities and sectors. The required financial and technological resources will help us to take urgent and immediate actions to transform the arid and semi-arid zones into productive areas, create infrastructures to improve the river basin management, enable water desalinization to increase the availability of safe drinking water to our communities, reduce soil degradation and combat coastal erosion. We cannot afford to wake up and suddenly face that we lost our coastal lands and infrastructures due to the impact of climate change. We need money to implement our Red Plus strategy and also the Climate Change Resilience Project. Copenhagen cannot allow that in countries like Mozambique, our people continue to die and become climate change refugees. It would be inhuman if we had to leave Copenhagen without an agreement. We need to take measures to avoid an increase of temperature beyond two, de beyond two degrees Celsius. We must play our historical role in the world development. All of us from north and south have the right to development. Let us be committed to save our planet. We in Africa are ready to do our part. Developed countries must also fulfill their obligations. I thank you very much, Madam Chair. Please.